All right, well, hey everyone, how's it going? John here, Genetry Solar, and I've got the transformer, the new 12K transformer, unwrapped. Uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to leave this outer plastic here, this ring that goes all the way around. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to leave that. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to make a significant difference or not. Um, I might just get rid of it. But I do like the idea of it protecting the entry points into the transformer. Uh, so I don't know. I haven't really decided yet. But we did decide that we were going to remove the plastic. And uh, number one, I wanted to actually inspect this uh, just to make sure that there wasn't any obvious damage or any ridiculousness that would be going on with this thing. And uh, it looks good uh, top and bottom. So I'm very happy with that. Um, these are actually the, the chokes that we're going to be using uh, on the primaries that go to the main board. These things are massive, obviously, but they have to be because we have to get at least two turns of one of these. We have to get at least two turns around here. I'm hoping for three. Uh, we'll have to see. I'm hoping for three. That seems to be the sweet spot. It gets a little bit better. The no load current goes down just a little bit with three turns. We'll see. I have yet to try to wrap this around here, but that will be for tomorrow's project. Uh, and then you can see one of the reasons, you know, actually, believe it or not, I didn't really think about it until I was doing my video yesterday when I was talking about the plastic and so on. I didn't even really think about the thermistors. So these are the thermistors that we actually use. We have two thermistors. This one here actually goes to the main board and we have one on the the AC side. This is your uh, transformer input and then we have one on the DC side. Now the the battery side is one giant block and what I do is I mount the thermistor as far away from the intake fan as possible. That way I know this being the warmest spot over here because it's as far away from the intake fan uh, should be the warmest spot in the whole thing. Now it's one big solid block, so it doesn't necessarily work out exactly like that, but I figured that the hottest spot should be somewhere down here so we can react sooner uh, because obviously this part of the metal, even though it's going to spread itself out thermally, you know, it's not an exact science, but I try to have it as far away from the fans as possible. There'll be one on that side, and then there will be, of course, one on this side as well. Now, in theory, these should be both the same temperature. They should be identical. In the power jack days, that wasn't the issue. But as much as I've tested with literally eight thermistors all over this thing, uh, these have always been the same temperature. So I only need one here. You might say, oh, no, what if this gets really, really hot? You don't know it. Then we got other problems. So... Putting one right here, there's already a hole for it. Uh, putting one right here uh, should be adequate. But at any rate, uh, that's what the ring terminals are for. So they make a perfect surface, like so. And then the nubs, we call them nubs, these things here, uh, which I believe are the exact same thermistor, just in, you know, they don't have a ring terminal around them. Um, these here, what I like to do is I like to slide them underneath windings if possible. Now this thing's wound really tight. I mean, there's there's very little slop in here at all. So I could probably find something down here where I could squeeze this in or push it in between these two windings here. And then I add a little bit of hot glue on top of it to hold it into place so it doesn't go anywhere. But the idea is that we want contact with the actual transformer. Having plastic over it, it's not going to transfer the heat as well. Eventually, it's going to heat up to that temperature, but consider that it'll probably react a lot slower. So this transformer is getting really hot because you got it loaded to 14, 15 kilowatts or whatever, and it doesn't see it in time, and that could cause damage to the transformer. This is an example. Don't have an exact number on where that is, but that's always possible. So having the thermistor in direct contact with the windings would, in theory, provide a more accurate temperature. Now, I can't stick one of these into the temperature, or the temperature, the transformer core and touch that. That would kind of be ideal, seeing where your core is at. But 
that's obviously not possible. I have not had any issues with transformers melting down. Uh, we have our strut off set at 179, 180. That's Fahrenheit. Uh, and I have yet to have a transformer that has melted down at those temperatures. So this seems to work. Um, I, I'm sure somebody out there is going to comment there's a better way to do this. Even got some comments about maybe have the transformer company uh, install a couple of these as they're winding them. Uh, I don't know if that's a possibility. I haven't really looked into it. I haven't asked uh, Sid what he thinks about it. Um, if that is a possibility, we would have to ship these to the transformer company. And then, you know, Sid would have to figure out where's the best spot to put it. And then you would have, you know, a wire sticking out. There's also a chance that that could, you know, introduce uh, some possible uh, potential damage if it gets caught on something. Because it's a, it's a pretty small wire here. So I don't know. That's something to maybe possibly consider. But as of now, I've got a whole bunch of these. So we're perfect, you know, we're going to be fine just... Uh, I can even take one and maybe slide it in between the plastic to hold it there. As long as it's touching the windings, that's what I've ever, always done since the beginning with all the inverters. Even going back to the power jack days, that's what I did is I made sure that they were coming into direct contact and I didn't lather on all this really sticky black glue that, that just, you know, whatever, um, that acts more of an insulator than it does a conductor, but uh, seems to work out pretty good, really. Um, and I have compared... With my laser thermometer, I've compared the temperature to what the screen is reading. It's fairly accurate, you know, within a degree or two. So uh, I'm not too concerned about it. But yeah, so this thing is getting ready. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to be testing this on the bench first. I'm going to be testing the whole setup on the bench first. I'm getting ready. I don't have the chassis right now or the shells. Uh, the reason is because the box company is currently using them to measure out what they need to create shipping boxes for us. But I'm going to spend tomorrow working on this so that I can at least get this transformer powered up by this main board. And I'm, you know, obviously just going to be doing a, a bench test, basically. Because I don't want to get all this inside and all bolted in and all that work and then find out something's wrong and have to rip it all out again. So the idea is that this is all brand new stuff. This is not something I'm going to have to do when I'm actually assembling these. This is just the first one. This is the very first new transformer uh this is actually out of that inverter that i talked about yesterday that had the old transformer this is out of that this thing has been <laughs> uh to hell and back i am not kidding uh that that inverter i was not exaggerating it has been through a lot uh so that is this and sid is intimately familiar with this main board because i've had to send it to him several times to have repaired because we have just beat the crap out of it um so uh, this is the main board that got me that 18 kilowatts without a problem. Uh, and yeah, I mean, so it's a perfectly fine main board. There's nothing wrong with it. This is as close to our spec as you're going to get. Obviously, there's going to be some changes and, you know, a little bit of layout issues. Or not issues, but changes. But for the most part, this is our production um, main board. But, of course, uh, there's minor tweaks for the final one that's actually in the inverter that's running my house right now. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to be hooking these two up together. I'm going to be running some tests. I'm going to look at it on the scope if Sid needs just to make sure that we're okay. We're going to double check this. I don't want to throw it all together and say, oh, well, load test is fine. And then 10 minutes later, it blows up. I mean, things happen. That's why you test. So we, we are going to test this on the bench first. I'm not going to put it under a considerable load because I'm not going to have fans. It takes quite a while, actually, to get these transformers to heat up. First of all, it takes a while from cold. When they're cold, depending on the load that you throw at it, you know, it could be 15, 20, 25 minutes before this thing will start getting warm. You know, if you if you hit it right at red line, right from the get-go, yeah, it's only going to be a couple minutes and it's going to, the fans are going to come on. But if it's a cold start, like what this is going to be, it can sit here on the bench for probably a good 20, 25 minutes at a kilowatt or so of load before the fans would even need to come on. And even at that, the fans barely ever come on, just barely. I mean, this thing really does stay pretty cool as it is. It's not until you get into the upper loads that the fans then really have to react to keep this thing cool. Same with this. At room temperature, uh, it, we don't even need fans on it. I mean, we, we just don't. It's, uh, it's pretty cool with these 
here and with all the fets dividing up all the work this thing really does not get that warm in fact <laughs> it's actually sometimes cooler than ambient temperature when the fans are running on it so as weird as that is so anyways uh so i'll be working on this tomorrow getting this all set up i'll get a bench uh test set up going here so you guys will be able to see it hear it uh, i'll have the uh, the thermal camera on it i'll have my laser thermometer on it i'll be checking for things like hot spots or anything else like that sid has already tested this as far as um you know he ohmed it out just to make sure there weren't any problems that wasn't shorted out somewhere or anything else like that so we know it's a good transformer um but that's just the basic testing now i need to actually load test it and unless there's a significant problem that we're not aware of internally then this should be perfectly fine and we've already tested this a thousand times so we know this is good um this poor thing <laughs> like i said to hell and back it's been and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely battle worn. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but that's fine. Eventually, this thing is probably going to end up going on my shelf. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it like it is because functionality wise, it's identical to the ones that we've got that are production units. It's just this isn't the final representation. So I don't know if I'm going to eventually swap it out. Uh, I might just leave it and let it run. And who knows? But at any rate. So yeah, there you have it. I'm going to uh, do all this tomorrow, get this thing all set up and let it run, provide Sid with any data that he might need. Um, I do not believe he actually had this on one of our main boards yet. So who knows, there might be something in there that maybe there's a little noise that was introduced. I mean, you just don't know. There's anytime you change a variable, then it's always possible that it could have a negative effect on the system overall. So we have to make sure that we test this before we just willy-nilly throw it in a case and say, well, we're good to go uh, just because the previous one works. So um, in theory, you know, even though the specs are pretty much identical, in theory, this should perform a little bit better than the one that I've got running my house. And if you recall, that was the one that had the 108 LRA amps uh, for my big air conditioner that barely went zzz, and it was it was on. So... Um, this should, in theory, perform a little bit better just because it's better built. Um, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I, I have more faith in this one than I do the previous one. I mean, just look at the attention to detail here. <laughs> and this is going to make it so much neater on the inside. You guys saw that other transform I had, and it was like a spaghetti monkey mess all over the place. It was just you know electrical tape everywhere i had um zip ties holding things down and all this other stuff it was crazy mess to something like this that's going to be super neat and tidy the only thing is it's going to be hard to work with these these have to be wrapped like i said at least twice and i'm shooting for three times so if i can get it to wrap three times remember it still has to be able to reach this main board it still has to be able to reach this inside the chassis now it's it's close <laughs> if you've seen the inside the transformer is about right here sid absolutely loves to make things as small as possible so i don't think i'm going to have a problem but you never know if i wrap it in the the um the primary comes out to about right here and i can't get it to wiggle its way down all this i mean yeah so at least two but three is ideal we'll see if I can get three. Now, the nice thing about this wrap here is we technically don't need to wrap these. Now, on the unit that I have, um, the previous, no, no, actually, I did wrap these in electrical tape. I do recall. So uh, these are identical to the ones that are in the, uh, the, the, I would say, power jack production unit that I've got run in the house. And I did wrap those in electrical tape. But I don't think that's going to be needed now. It, it might still be. It, it, it might be that this maybe it'll touch the case or, or something else. I will have to look at it. I'll wrap it. You know, I'll experiment as soon as I get the case back. If it looks like, for example, it's coming close to the negative, then obviously I got to wrap it. I mean, you know, th there's other things that it can touch. But if it's off to the side and it's nowhere near anything at all, then I'm not going to bother because this isn't going anywhere i mean i promise you it, this isn't going anywhere you can literally throw this off of a 10 foot building 10 foot <laughs> well that wouldn't be so bad but a 10 story building 
And it's not like this is going to bend its way all over the place and then this is going to end up over here somewhere. No, and you wouldn't run it there anyway. But um, this is so tough. It's not going anywhere. I promise you it's not. So uh, I'm not really too concerned about this. If it were tucked in over here, finding a way, wiggling its way all the way over here, and then, you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not worried about that at all. So, uh, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure out if I need to wrap these in electrical tape. We are looking at the green ones that are um, electrically insulated. Uh, they seem to be harder to find, especially local. These I just got on Amazon to our spec. Um, there's nothing special about them. Uh, so we're trying to source the ones that are green, um, but we mainly did that because we had these windings here, and if you take, obviously, metal to metal, that can rub the enamel off of these windings, and, you know, that can cause all sorts of problems, shorts and, and things like that. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted, um, you know, some uh, wrapped ones, but these are well protected now i don't see this material being burned through so at any rate it would take a lot to burn through this stuff and i think yeah this is rated for 125 c so i don't i don't really see a problem but anyway i'm rambling so tomorrow it'll be exciting i'll be able to get this you know fired up transformer fired up getting these two acquainted with each other and uh that should be fun Probably do a video on that while it's running. I'm not going to go through all the thermistors and all this stuff. I'll just have my uh, my thermal camera as well as the laser thermometer to be able to watch uh, watch all that. And the fats should be perfectly fine. They the, at room temperature they stay really cool, so I'm not worried about that. Anyways, it's going to be a fun day tomorrow. Get get all this stuff around, get it together, and then as soon as I get the case back on Thursday, I'm going to start putting this stuff in the case may fire up another test on the bench just to make sure I didn't screw anything up, but it should be ready to go at that point. After I've tested these two things, it should be ready for service. And then I can get it on the wall, I can get it hooked up to my battery bank, I can get it hooked up to the house, and then I can start the real load testing. I'm hoping for some sunny days to be able to really hit it with some uh, some load. I'll be able to see pretty early on if there's going to be any problems. Uh, just based on my previous load testing, um, I'll know if there's going to be an issue. If it starts really heating up at 3 kilowatts, then I know there's a problem. Uh, but I don't anticipate any issues. And again, I might take this off. I don't know. Um, I just like that it kind of helps keep this inward. But again, it might not even be doing anything. I just don't like... I don't like the, the, the windings just kind of flopping out of this. I don't know. It almost kind of keeps it inward so that it can't yank. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I don't know if I'm going to keep that or not. But anyway. So be looking forward to some videos or a video at least tomorrow of this thing running on the bench, on the power supply first. While we do some testing, I might throw a kilowatt at it or so. My power supply can only handle about 15 amps or so. Um, it is supposed to be a 25 amp um, power supply, but that's at 60 volts. And I like to test it a little bit on the lower end because that is the worst that it's going to be able to um, experience is the lower end of 48 volts, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks again for all of your support as always, and take care.